hit the button, Matt. Okay. Hey, gearheads, and welcome to Garage Talk, a discussion about all things automotive. I'm Corey. And I'm Matt. And each week, this podcast will serve as a catalyst for discussion on all sorts of topics that grind our gears, rev our engines, or just need a bit more conversation. And let's just get it out of the way early. I did not look at the schedule of releasing episodes Uh huh. And, and this whole Friday, every Friday thing. Right. Merry Christmas, everyone. It is Christmas, isn't it, Corey? If you are listening to this on Christmas Day, perhaps with your family, God bless you. Thank you. Or, that is awesome. Or perhaps to get away from your family. <laughs> that is true, depending on family dynamics. Not yeah, judging. Yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, so if you're li- listening to this on release day, thank you. Uh, did not anticipate that, but hey, we are nothing if not determined, or maybe it's just stubborn. I don't know. Probably. But we're, we're sticking with this Friday thing for now. And uh, yeah. And we're 45 episodes yeah. into this gig. Yeah. So, Merry Christmas. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for listening, especially if you're listening on release day. Yeah. Merry Christmas. And uh, yeah, uh, the interesting dynamic of Christmas and New Year's is, uh, I believe New Year's also falls on Friday. It does indeed, yes. Stay tuned next week for a uh, New Year's themed-ish episode. No no, uh, no (laughs) leap years (laughs) change. It's always seven days apart. They're always, you know, whatever day Christmas falls on. I I never said planning was a strong suit. Calendar (laughs) planning, I should say. (laughs) Calendars are not a strong suit of mine. I will just throw that out there because... I frequently double, triple, quadruple book myself for things Ooh. to the point that my wife and I have now have a shared calendar between the two of us. That's probably smart. And I check it before everything, mm. before I commit to anything. Uh, then we also have a shared calendar with my family, my parents, because they watch Tucker on Tuesdays, Tucker Tuesdays. So we've got that. I've got calendars out the wazoo and... It's interesting that I keep them all somewhat straight. Can, can we do an episode on defining what a wazoo is? I don't think anyone wants to hear that, Matt. <laughs> <Maybe not. laughs> but we might have to check that explicit box when we upload that episode. <laughs> I may have to do a little research as, as to what... <laughs> No. What so, are we talking about <laughs> for real this episode, Corey? What's going on okay, this week? Okay, so yes, okay. Uh, yeah, calendar... Nonsense uh, uh, yeah, aside, uh-huh. this this week I figured, you know, we are bombarded this time of year, for those of you that still watch commercials, with the car commercials of the husband surprising the wife, walking her outside, and it's snowing and beautiful. And I, I would say Lexus is probably the most guilty of this tactic, the big red bow on a new vehicle, mm-hmm. which I'm sure you've got multiple strong feelings on. Uh and, and I don't want to steal any thunder, but that that commercial has always been a funny one to me because if I ever tried that in my household, it would not go over well for good reason. Uh, I am not th- – Holly, y- you have all the reason <laughs> to be upset if I ever pulled this stunt because have you ever thought the logistics of what's actually happening on those well, commercials? That, I, so I, I'm – I'm going to rant just a little bit. Just and, a little, and go for it. Probably a little more than a little bit, but I, I'm going to rant either way. It's not about school buses, is it? It is not. <laughs> no. Stay tuned. We won't. New Year's. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> go ahead. That was a fun episode. Yes. Uh, no, I, what you said is exactly the issue that I have with, um, with, with this time of year when it comes to the automotive industry. If, if I had a bone to pick with the automotive industry around Christmas time, it is this one. And that is, who in their right mind would make a hundred thousand dollar decision without consulting their better half? Well, that uh, like that's that, that's, that's step that's number where, one, right? That's kind of where we're going with this episode, and yeah. where we will end up, I'm sure. Yeah. In that, the the brands that that really like i said lexus being one of them that this is mercedes a, a, a market, gmc well, yeah, bmw yeah. what are some common themes be- behind those brands they're, they're luxury vehicles. oh yeah and but, 
hence the hundred thousand dollar price tag that yeah. you just mentioned. Um, I would say that they are marketing to people that live in a different world than you and I, Matt. Uh, definitely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some fantasy world, way, way far away from here. I would like to try my hand at living in said fantasy world, where I could surprise my wife with a luxury vehicle uh-huh. and it not be a concern of how this got here. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. spent what? <laughs> <laughs> you you did, huh? Without right. what? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> so yes, I. Totally, Holly, full vindication here on this, and thank you for keeping me grounded in my obsession and my hobby and my addiction, whatever you want to call this gear-headed world that I live in. I I feel like the least of your issues is picking the wrong color (laughs) of the... (laughs) Well, they're always like white, silver, or red. Those are the colors. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because it's always Christmas colored and themed. No, the, 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 the GMC commercial that I saw just recently... Um, she walks outside, and you know, I hands over the eyes and all that, all that garbage. They all walk outside, jazz. and there is an AT4 GMC Sierra, yeah, and a loaded out Acadia Denali. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of vehicle in the driveway. And of course, she takes the AT4. Well, yeah, but and leaves him with the Acadia. Corey, that's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of vehicle in the driveway. And, and, and the point of contention in the commercial is who gets which one. Yeah. Not where did these come from and how are we paying for how them? How is this even possible? But did you notice the house that they were walking out of? Well, like the $5 million uh, house yeah. that they're... Yeah. 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 Well. <laughs> Again, this is not a world you and I live in. It's a world you and I would like to live in or at least try our hands okay. at living in, okay. I'm sure. But for, for perspective's sake and... and Correct me on the numbers here, because I'm not a numbers person uh, necessarily have, when it comes to I only, math. I only claim to be when I have an Excel spreadsheet in front of me. So, so five million dollar house, mm-hmm. one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of cars, mm-hmm. right? Fifty thousand dollar house. My wife would be pissed at me, and I don't live in a fifty thousand dollar house. But if we lived in a fifty thousand dollar house, my wife would be pissed at me if I spent fifteen hundred dollars right. on a brand new vehicle of any kind. Right. Yeah. Just. It, Yes. <laughs> These commercials make no sense. No. And uh, I, I would love to live in a world personally where they, they do make sense. And I'm like, oh, yeah, totally relatable. Uh, but a no. vehicle purchase is not something I ever plan on surprising, especially someone I share finances with. Yeah. If I were ever blessed with large sums of money, we've seen pro athletes gift parents with vehicles and that is awesome because parents sacrifice so much to get these professional athletes Uh to the point where they are professional athletes Uh, we've seen the story just here locally i've witnessed with my own eyes patrick mahomes going from a high school qb and baseball player and basketball player i I don't know if I own the rights to it, but I own a copy of him dunking on somebody. Nice. In high school. It's a really cool picture. I don't know if I can share it because Uh. I don't know if White House ISD owns it. I won't go into the details of how I came about said picture. Thank you, Colton. (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) you know, we've seen what parents had to sacrifice to get the kids to practice and, you know, traveling schedules and this and that and the other so I'm totally, and it on doesn't always pay off to right. the tune of five hundred and three right. million dollar right. ten year right. contract either. Right. You know, so like I'm totally on board with you know JJ Watt did the same thing for his grandma, yeah. and I'm it's sure amazing. more of her family. It's I, awesome. I'm on, I'm on board with that. Uh, one, they don't share finances. Two, they live in the world where they can do that, right? Because of the world that we enjoy watching sports and this, that, and the other, and that's as far as I will go into it on that one. So I'm all on board for that. But right. when you share finances with someone, a vehicle purchase is not something to spur on someone or surprise. Hey, honey, guess what? I sat on this with 60 months at best of paying for a vehicle. Yeah. Like, yeah. no. Uh, because, like, I'm seeing 84-month financing terms now. Oh, 84 yeah. 84 months. 84 That's months. 
eighty four months at seven and eight percent interest yeah, too. And no, mm -mm, don't do it. You're paying for no. that rig three times over by the yeah. time you get it paid for. Don't do it. Anyway, so all right, so we've ranted plenty. That, yeah. So define for our fine listeners, or maybe this is what we spend the rest of the episode discussing. I, I I'd say this maybe some back and forth between you and I, and definitely online feedback post us oh, yeah. recording this episode about uh, what. Because, again, these are typically luxury vehicles in these commercials, so they are appealing to a luxury-minded crowd. Yeah. I I've There is a post on gtgaragetalk.com from when we were <laughs> in our infancy. <laughs> <laughs> what little did we know of where this would go by the end of 2020? But uh, talking about, you know, have we reached peak car? Uh, what makes a vehicle a luxury vehicle? Because we are seeing so many different features and options trickle down into the everyday car yeah where you know the uh, backup cameras used to be a luxury now they're mandated by the government and they have to be in every new vehicle since the 2014 model year which i drove a 2013 doesn't have it so there's there's that you know is it how how do you define a luxury vehicle? Because again, there are the the line is graying when it comes to technology. The line is graying or blurring. I don't know why I said blurring. graying. Yeah. The line is blurring between options technology wise, and we're starting to see now automakers like Jeep with uh, one the Grand Cherokee. Mm -hmm. has won many awards for how luxurious the interior is. You can there's a leather wrapped everything package <laughs> in in that rig. Is that what it's called? Leather wrapped everything? <laughs> no, that's what I've defined it as. Oh, okay. But it, it's It'd be a great name for it. The, the the leather option and you know that dates back to when they were partnered or owned by Mercedes. Right. Uh, which is how old that platform is. But then, you know, you get into uh, vehicles that I had the privilege of getting to drive this past year in the Rolls Royce Cullinan, a vehicle that cost twice what my house cost. <laughs> and there's no denying that is a luxury vehicle. Right. But how how do you define that as a luxury vehicle and a seventy five thousand dollar Jeep Grand Cherokee with a leather everything package right. a luxury vehicle? Right. Like are are there different categories of luxury vehicle? Are, like, uh, what does it what, mean? What? Yeah, help! Yeah. Help us define this whole term of luxury vehicles. And so, in preparation for this, I did Google and go to Rolls Royce's <laughs> website for the colon in. Oh, okay. And it, it <laughs> I, I I still laugh that this is actually in big bold letters in front of me right now. You can't see it. And I'm about to tell you, and it's going to make you laugh. Oh, no. Uh, again, the Rolls Royce that I drove earlier this year had some options on it. It had, you know, special purple paint with uh, purple piping on the leather to match. Uh, it, it was not a quote unquote base model Cullinan. Right. But 420 grand, twice what my house cost. Uh, I'm scrolling through the Cullinan page on Rolls Royce's website, and the first bit of text that I came across, <laughs> I don't know if I can say this with a straight face, luxury for all. Who? <laughs> all y'all? Maybe maybe they left the y'all off of that. My, who? <laughs> 420000 No. No, it's wow. not luxury for all. It's luxury for some. And That's incredible. The, yeah. Uh, share unforgettable adventures in the company of friends. With, this, with its spacious interior, Cullinan accommodates every traveler in unparalleled comfort. So it, it's your rich group of friends going up to you know ski right. in some luxurious place that is Vail. Still the hot spot for skiing in Colorado? Um. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. It, <laughs> that luxury for all yeah, applies more to the high country trims of <laughs> the Chevy Silverado and Tahoe Suburban. Even, even those are reaching a little far sometimes. I mean, good grief. 
Because those are those are sixty and seventy thousand so dollars. Creeping over eighty now. It's insane for it's insane. a high country. Yeah. So, so w- I, I I like to um, pick it apart. Uh, I, I like word studies. Okay. I like I like okay. looking at okay at the meanings and things like that. So you're probably going to take this in a different way than I would have. Uh, Go ahead. Dicti- have at it. Dictionary dot com. Okay. Not sponsored. Um, <laughs> has five different definitions of luxury um at least for the noun portion of it right um i think number five best fits that garbage that you just read <laughs> off of your screen a foolish or worthless form of self-indulgence four hundred and twenty thousand yeah. dollars for a vehicle yeah it did have matt uh-huh to be fair to our friends at rolls royce i i we're not hating I'm very gracious for the opportunity to get to drive oh, it. Oh, yeah. It did have the 6.75 liter V12 engine. V12 or W12? I, I've lost at this point because it is so out of the stratosphere of what I am used to. I um, think it's a W12 because I think it's the yeah, uh, yeah, the it Volkswagen-based. Yeah. Um, it had push-button self-closing doors. Can I taint it, Rolls-Royce by saying it's Volkswagen-based? <laughs> he definitely <laughs> did. Uh, the people's car. So uh, maybe that's where they get that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it had such great wood trim interior. It had leather wrapped, literally everything. Uh-huh. It had except for the wood woolen w- f- floor mats w- that were so soft and plush the touch it had the rear entertainment package and i'm mm-hmm. talking about the tailgating with the you know are you planning on living in this thing because I, I would have to and i still wouldn't be able to afford it because again it was twice what my house cost yeah so mm-hmm. yeah anyway <clears throat> number four we are grateful for, a, for the opportunity a pleasure yeah. out of the ordinary allowed to oneself okay yeah okay number three a means of ministering to such indulgence or enjoyment okay okay number two free i don't think so or habitual (laughs) indulgence in or enjoyment of comforts and pleasures in addition to those necessary for a reasonable standard of well-being now even that one leaves some interpretation there you know necessary for a reasonable standard of well-being um you can still go buy a car for twelve thousand dollars and it'll get you from here to there. Right. Absolutely. $12,000 is a whole lot less than 420000 And you raise a great philosophical point because, again, to some people, a car is a luxury. Oh, yeah. And here we are arguing about what is a luxury car. Oh, so man. We don't want to feel or come off as entitled or insensitive to that fact. Right. We, we are blessed uh, we both have vehicles. Our spouses have vehicles. We are very grateful for that. But, yes, when the sole method of advertising this time of year... Is r- indulgence. Grinds our gears Oh yeah, <laughs> as this does. I, I just wanted to explore it a little bit more uh, for Christmas and, and, and just really unpack... This idea of what makes a luxury vehicle. Because, again, uh, you've got Chevy is really going full bore into this high country trim being their luxury. Yeah. Comparable to their sister brand over at GMC with the Denali luxury sub brand. And then, you know, you've got uh, Ford's got the King Ranch, which is very luxurious. Oh, yeah. Cowboy luxurious truck. You've got platinum, the limited, which are both oh my goodness luxurious. Oh yeah, you've got Ram with the uh, cowboy Cadillac, if you will. Is it sacrilege to <laughs> apply a Cadillac Ca- term? Ca- it might be a little to yeah. a Ram fifteen hundred. But the Laramie, the the Longhorn Laramie, Laramie, which oh. I, I apparently can't say well on first try, but it's got the individually branded interior wood trim I, I love if it were called anything other than the longhorn edition uh-huh. I, I would snatch one of those up before i would the even higher trim which is the the limited which i would have to get the white and blue interior because white and blue white and blue 
leather interior. Yes. Oh, I don't know about that. No. I'm going to have to Google that. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about that. Go go check that one out. So the, again, as we get into trucks, th- this is where the line really gets blurry and weird because... Well, I think mostly in Texas. Uh, well... Because we're so such, I mean... Well, okay. So let's take this to last week's episode. Okay. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, it was a fun one to record. We had a guest on... Former GM employee Bill Taylor, 34 years in the industry, and coming from, uh, he's the son of someone in the industry who is instrumental in the K5 Blazer. So, yeah. Uh, he said one of his dad's gripes working as an engineer for Chevy and coming up with the K5 Blazer was just the general disinterest in investing in, in trucks. Yeah. And trying to get them to spare 10 cents for a door seal or this, that, or the other was, was the gripe that was the example for us. And now you, the Ram 1500 limited, you get heated and cooled rear seats, rear seats. <laughs> like there are some Mercedes vehicles that don't have that luxury Yeah, in a, in a 1500 truck. full size truck. Like, in a, in I, a, I'm getting so confused about what is and is not luxury. What 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 gets you into the party? What gets you right? Like I I think a pretty woman. She's going down Rodeo Drive. I have money. I have money. Take my <laughs> shut up and take my money. <laughs> uh, I know that's mixing multiple internet memes together, but like wh- I I don't get it anymore. I don't. I, I, don't, I don't either. <laughs> it, it it blows my mind to think that from the seventies. Door seals were a luxury in in trucks. To now we have heated and cooled rear seats and yeah. USB C outlets and twelve inch touchscreen displays and fold flat front seats so you can sleep in the vehicles and uh, just everything everything it, it, it's just it's getting crazy and I'm the techie of the two of us it it is truly ridiculous where where we're taking it all and i'm the kind of guy that when i'm shopping for a vehicle i you know i do the thing where i check all the boxes just to see how expensive i can get it and you know it's crazy they're 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 getting up there oh yeah definitely so the i know it's this way in texas cuz i'm in texas so i see what happens in texas first um i would imagine that this is probably the case across most southern states in the U.S., yeah. um, but the truck is becoming, uh, well, really has been for a, a long yeah. time, but um, becoming even more so now the That's multi-tool of the toolbox because yeah. it can do all the things. It, it, there it are family be, vehicles here in Texas. Oh, yeah. I know certain areas of the country, that's what? That's no, that's crazy. Right. But they are family vehicles a, here yeah. in Texas. It's absolutely. So you're hauling your family in it. So you got to have a crew cab. You're, you know, throwing a, a whatever in the bed. So you got to have the bed space. You got to be able to pull what the trailer. What are you throwing in the bed? Me? Yeah. I'm throwing a, a, a motorcycle or uh, something like that in the bed of the truck. Not that I have one at the moment, but. I'm thinking a couple kayaks for me. Kayaks? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm I'm dragging the jet ski to the lake. There you go. Um, although the pilot does that very well. So yeah. sorry, got uh, us off on a tangent. You know, um, multi tool. But but now, especially to the luxury segment, the the King Ranch branding has mm-hmm. been around for mm-hmm. probably what two decades. Yeah, something. Um, like that. And before that was the Harley Davidson edition, yep. which was this loaded out, leathered out, mm-hmm. you know, uh, truck. They they really are becoming the truck that you know. You're stretching fence on Friday afternoon, going home, taking a shower, loading the wife in the truck, and driving into town to the fancy restaurant mm-hmm. and having dinner and having the truck valeted. Yeah, I mean it's it's it is the multi tool of vehicles. Yeah, and they they have become the status symbol, especially around here. Oh uh, yeah, trucks and SUVs, which truck-based SUVs, because we've alluded to it in episodes past, uh, Tahoes, Yukons, and Escalades. Around here, in the area that we are, East Texas, they are like the ultimate status symbol in the kid pickup line. Yes. And 
I'm seeing more and more expeditions now too. Yeah. They're they're growing. Yeah, they're creeping in there. But uh, I'd say this new gen uh, full size SUV from the General is going to steal some of that. All those gains that Chevy Ford was making in the segment, I think the General is about to steal back. Especially the more luxurious you get, because yeah, uh, the the Navigator had the Escalades number. Oh yeah. And now the Escalade says, "Oh no no no, this this my my game my right. town this town ain't big enough for the two of us." <laughs> uh, and now we've got a thirty nine inch curved OLED instrument panel infotainment screen with heads up display and it's augmented flipping reality. Ridiculous. And yeah, it really is. And uh, where do we draw the line? It, because it really is getting crazy. Uh, so. I I thought it was funny when gauge clusters started going full digital. I love it. The customization that you can right. do with it is amazing and astounding, and cool things are coming from it. But I've already seen the downside of it because my wife's Jeep Cherokee, it's 2014, the center part, she has two analog gauges for the speed and the tack right. on either side, but everything else is on a little four inch screen yeah. co full color screen in the middle which includes the fuel gauge not long after we bought the vehicle used it's the only major gripe we've had with the vehicle not long after we bought it that screen went out so now you don't know how much fuel you have yeah yep which has not been a problem for the two of us again uh, short commutes and all that but we, for a short period of time, we had no fuel gauge. It was fixed under warranty and no problem. But when you are putting everything into a full digital display, like, yeah. I'm like, do we have an analog backup? <laughs> Help me out here. Right. My old schoolness is coming out in, in, in that respect. It makes me a little nervous going all in oh, yeah. on that. But uh, um, being the techie of the two of us, I foresee it in the very near future for me. You and I have watched um, the many YouTube channels and bloggers and whatnot um, messing with the new Mustang Mach-E yeah. this week. Uh, yeah. A lot of people have been able to get their hands on them, review them. Ford, we're still waiting. Uh, we're here. That's it. Come on with it. Um, I, I'd be happy if we uh, hold out till the GT model comes out. That'd be fine with me. Yeah. I'd be okay with that too. I've uh, got an idea for a race. More on that to ooh, come. Yeah, um, but one of the things that the guys at Throttle House said was shout out. Yeah, they love that there is actually a volume knob in yep. that massive yep. screen in the middle of the car. <laughs> yes, the execution of it kind of has me scratching my head. But yeah, uh, there are some things that there's no replacement for. Oh yeah, as far as that. I'm also appreciative that it did not go the route of what everybody is comparing it to competition wise in the Tesla Model Y. There is actually a gauge directly in front of you that tells yes. you the pertinent information. Yes. So it's a fancy little, like two inch tall, 16 inch wide mm, yeah. bar. But yeah, it, it's. It tells you what you need to know without having to glance in the center of your vehicle to see right. how fast you're going. You so know, speed, fuel, those types of things. So yeah. we're. We're on another tangent again. Man. I don't know how we got here. But, yeah. So, uh, yes, the blurry line of what is considered luxury, I, I don't know that we will ever truly get an answer to that. I think it will only get blurrier as time goes on. Did you ever think that Kia, <laughs> of all people, would have a – or, I'm sorry, Hyundai. Hyundai. Well, well Kia, too, now. Yeah. Uh, but but – did you ever think that Hyundai would have a luxury line? Yeah. And now Genesis. Genesis has split off and it is its own entity. Yeah. Um, well, even, you know, I don't know if it was a misspeak or not, but the Kia K900 was the luxury Kia to have. And no, I <laughs> I did not ever think. <laughs> uh, I was introduced to Kia as a brand when my dad bought a 1997 as base as you can get Kia Sophia, yeah. which I still laugh at the rhyme of <laughs> what were they thinking? I don't know. But um, 
the, the Kia Sophia, it was beige with a tan cloth interior and a five-speed manual. That it did have going for it. Four-cylinder engine was nothing special. He, he, You and I did an episode with our fathers. It was yeah. a Father's Day special. Yeah. It was a fun one. He elaborated a little bit of what he used it for, but it was a territory car for him. He drove all over East Texas in it. It, it it met his needs, but that's what Kia was at the time. It was yeah. an appliance. Oh yeah. And now, yeah, to have their parent company spin off a what everybody is comparing to Bentley's, more so because of the design than perhaps all the luxury in it. But a Bentley competitor it yeah. is beyond me, and it is truly crazy to think how far we've come, how far they've come as a brand. It's insane. And you know what? Going back to our friends over at Throttle House, shout out, uh, and they were some of their defining qualities when they're talking about the ultra premium, ultra luxury is, you know, does the rail that hold the seat in place, is it chromed? Is it capped at the end or is it wide open? Things of that nature. Uh, How far down is the leather wrapped everything? Is the kick plate where your foot rests leather wrapped? Because I can tell you in the GV80 from Genesis, it is not. But in the Bentley Bentayga that they're comparing it against, it was. Who needs leather for their foot? Dang it. No kidding. That's, (laughs) yeah, that's excessive. Yeah. Uh, uh, Yeah. But, oh, those, well, those Bentegas, maybe not so much the Bentega, but the rest of the Bentley line, yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. It, it, I guess that's really the the point. Luxury would be excess. And, and at that point, it becomes objective where you draw that line mm-hmm. because what may be uh, excessive to me may not necessarily be excessive to mm-hmm. you. Yeah. You know, um, like, I would say that's actually mostly true because, you know, it, I I have a tendency to shop more uh, <laughs> new and techy, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I you can know, see that. you you know, you want Apple CarPlay. You I do. know, you want wireless charging. You I know, do. you know, like there's there are things that are no compromise to you yeah. that for me are just that they're luxury. They're yeah. they're. Ex- in excess, would they be nice to have? Yeah, but and and if I'm gonna cough up the money for a forty five thousand dollar whatever, then there's some things that I'm gonna, you know, some boxes I'm gonna want to check. But and so that that's probably where what really got me down this path to begin with, as we're thinking about and planning this episode is, so I bought a really 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 well equipped truck in yeah. two thousand seven, leather. Bucket seats up front, center console. It, you know, five three V eight, twenty inch wheels. Mm-hmm. It it had everything I wanted in it. It was a very nice rig. It was a two LT, right? Yes, two LT, which uh, by the end of that generation didn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. They changed option packages and all that, so it was near top of the line. The LTZ was at the top of the line at the time, so it had. Almost everything. It had the dash. So at that time, Chevy had two different dashes. The LTZ had a completely different dash from the Tahoe and Suburban, which was a little more car-like, a little less rugged and truck-like. But yeah. I wanted the more truck-like dash. Anyway, that was a very luxurious truck at the time. Yes. But like I said, it was well-equipped. Thirty-seven grand. I remember I'm rounding a bit, but that was the sticker on it. To get anything even remotely close to it, you're you are talking fifty plus yeah. thousand because I could spend fifty grand on a full size truck now as a family vehicle and still not have leather seats. Yep. Dang it! And why? Like it is getting it's ridiculous. Nuts. Yeah. It really is nuts. So I used to define luxury by price point, but you can't do that anymore because trucks are getting so expensive and. We've established that trucks are family vehicles down here. <laughs> and then I started defining it by certain key metrics like heated and cooled seats. Well, now those are trickling out everywhere. Now you've got a truck with a cooled rear seat. So yeah. Like I I don't I don't I don't I don't know. I'm lost. I, I think it really comes down to um a personal preference. I mean that that's I mean really 
that's as objective as yep. you can make it. Um, and there's there's really little. It's it's difficult to define because, like we mentioned the big at the beginning of the episode, um, not everybody can afford a car. Yeah. So, really, for some people, a car is a luxury item. Well, so, I I think you. To wrap this up, I believe you really kind of hit the nail on the head before I cut you off. I'm sorry. About it, it's really down to the buyer. It's down to what they consider luxuries and excesses. Because I can tell you the shopper going after that $420,000 Rolls Royce Cullinan, they are not cross shopping $84,000 Yukon Denali's. No. That. I don't foresee those being the same customer. Right. They are both large, well-powered, well-equipped luxury SUVs. Massive differences in what they call luxury, but it it really is where you stand as a customer. But it, it is crazy. Some of the luxuries that are trickling down to all levels, and I, I don't know, I, I guess... I, I feel I have ranted enough on this one. <laughs> I, I feel like I've gotten it out. It's been cathartic. Well, okay. So, so twenty you said earlier, 2013, 2014 was the first year that it was mandated. 2014. 2014. So backup cameras as of 2014. Yes. Um, new vehicles sold in the U.S., yes. Right. How long ago was air conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, really? Like, how how long ago was air con- did air conditioning become a South standard? Or <laughs> well... <laughs> But a standard option in vehicles, I mean, we're talking 25, maybe 30 years ago that it became a standard option in most vehicles. Air conditioning. Yeah. So I kind of laugh, you know, I I see all these vehicles that have soft-closed trunks and doors and this, that, and the other. My first vehicle was a 1991 Cadillac. There was Uh, nothing soft about that but the seats. (laughs) It was a, and the floaty ride. Oh, yeah. uh, It was a luxury vehicle. Uh, it was a 90s American vehicle, so it had its quirks and features. Thank you, Doug and Miro, for that. Uh, I hope you don't have that trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> don't sue me, please. <laughs> I, I, I respect what you do. But uh, it was a, a 90s American luxury vehicle. It had a soft closed trunk. So something in a 90s American luxury vehicle that American cars in the 90s kind of lost their way, but the fact that I had something then that we're seeing creep out now, like uh, the rear trunk engine cover of the mid-engine Corvette is soft close. Uh, <laughs> doors on the Bentley Bentayga that we've referenced earlier, they're soft close. It's becoming more and more of a thing, but all it is is a, a cheap little mechanical motor that right. pulls the door shut. And like... Uh, it is interesting how much marketing can drive up the cost of something that is relatively in- inexpensive in the grand scheme of things. Yes. Yep. And I really wonder, aside from the fact that they're hand built and all that stuff, the cost difference in producing some of these vehicles that we've gone on a rant. Because I remember, and I have searched and searched and searched for the article since we've started Garage Talk so that I can reference it. But the former CEO of FCA, before he passed away, one of his big investments in vehicles, and it has paid off, and they've only refined it since, was in the interiors of vehicles. And he said, I can't remember what it was, but it was something minuscule like 5 or $10 per vehicle which doesn't sound like a lot, but for $5 more per vehicle, you got a much more luxurious oh, yeah. interior yeah. than you had before. And if you look at Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, all those vehicles prior to them being taken on by FCA, uh, by Fiat, basically, and merging to become FCA, their interiors were atrocious. Oh, yeah. And, and they all looked the same, and it was all hard plastics everywhere. Yeah. And, and then Fiat came along, and they said, we're going to invest in interiors. I love the interior of my wife's, my wife's Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. 
and they've only gotten better. The Ram 1500s with those huge touchscreens. Yeah. Small investments pay huge dividends. Oh, and so yeah. I, I don't know. Are we just getting too picky as consumers? Are we demanding more things? Like you said, Apple CarPlay, this, that, and the other. Have we done this to ourselves? Oh, I absolutely. I, so, I, I completely believe that we have done this to ourselves. It we we are an instant gratification society now and and that includes our vehicles um to the point where and i'm guilty of it roll up to a stop sign and the radio's going and i may have a window down but as soon as i come to a stop i pick my phone up and look at it and i'm scrolling through waiting on the light i mean like we are so busy now yeah we're so involved with everything yep. now that when our cars come out and they don't have a touch screen and they don't have apple play and they don't have power windows and locks and they don't have air conditioning yep. we think well what kind of prehistoric <laughs> piece of junk is this you know yep. it's but in 1970 fuel injection was a luxury yep. item yeah i mean it, it's yeah it, it, are we showing our age on this episode a little a little yeah. we our millennium millennial is showing a bit yeah. i think yeah. but no, it, it's 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 an interesting thought process for sure. Um, good grief! The internal combustion engine would be considered a luxury item to uh, the, the old hay-powered yeah. uh, horse, <laughs> single horse power buggies. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's truly crazy where the industry has come, where it's going. It especially as we dive headfirst into electrification, it's like. It's a prerequisite if it's an electric vehicle to have all the technology wrapped up into it. So, like, luxury vehicle levels of technology are finding their way into the base model electric right. vehicles because, right. like, it's a foregone conclusion that it has to. So, it's really interesting to see I want where we're going. You know what I want to see? And, and this is just coming to mind as you're saying it. I want to see, like... A stripped down, uh, well, the MX-5 Miatas yep. are a perfect example yep. of everything you need and nothing more kind yes. of a vehicle. Yes. Um, front engine, rear wheel drive, stick shift, like beautiful, simple, yep. wonderful cars. Yep. I look forward to the day when there's an electric vehicle that has a manual transmission, front engine, rear drive, simple. And it's got crank windows, and it's got manual locks, and it's you know it's well, just a stripped down basic. If you think about it, manual crank windows and manual locks save on batteries. So yeah, wh- why why haven't <laughs> what what do if, how do un- unless it's <laughs> unless it's that, that psychological element of it that says okay we could build an electric vehicle that would compete with a Mustang GT. Uh, and and not put any of these luxury items in with it, but it's going to cost just as much as a yeah, 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 thirty five thousand yeah. dollar Mustang to perform as well, but have none of those niceties. So we build in all this extra to make a little money off the car. And yeah. it, it's a numbers it's a game. I know cycle. it's a numbers game, but well, you've heard from us for better part of uh, an hour. We're yeah. closing in on forty five minutes, so uh, we want to know. What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? What makes a luxury vehicle to you? Is, is it power windows and locks? Is it air conditioning? Is it heated and cooled seats? Is it leather, all the things? Is it actual metal when it looks like metal? Is it actual leather when it looks like leather? What, what is it? Yeah. Uh, where do you draw that line? What What do you consider luxury? So you can let us know on all things social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I should say, because there are some that we're just not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. At GT Garage Talk, or you can head on over to our website, gtgaragetalk.com, where you'll find news, interesting tidbits. I will do a write-up on my time with the Rolls-Royce colon in. Yeah. But uh, again, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you for spending time with us. If you have not checked us out on Patreon yet, you can hear a little bonus content as we rant about this just a little bit further. A little bit more. Uh, Uh, If your significant other bought you a brand new vehicle for Christmas this year, we want to specifically hear from you. Yes. Are you upset? Did he pick the right color? Does it have leather seats? All the things. Yeah. 
have you on an episode. That'd be a fun one. That would be a fun episode. So, uh, we've got a, fun episodes coming up. Next week's is going to be really fun. Can't wait to dive into that one. But until next time, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye.